recording. Okay, so anyway, I was getting started here. I was just saying that I'm pretty excited for tonight's call because I've been listening to, you know, I have a ton more downtime with um, having off now, and I've been just listening to tons and tons and tons of calls and uh, just like the Beachbody Champions page and the Rising Stars page. And I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with that, but Melanie Mitro has a, a page that once you become Diamond, you're privy to entering it. And basically it is Diamond and Above for the Dream Team. And it's just like a wealth of information. So anyway, in the Dream Team page, there's just so much good stuff. And a lot of times I just don't have time to listen to everything. So I've been going back and listening to it. And so tonight I wanted to focus on um, Success Club. So, you know, we talk about it all the time. If you, t if you ask Melanie, like, what is the secret sauce to this business? She'll tell you the secret sauce to this business is Success Club. She'll tell you that. That's it. She's like, you hit Success Club and you teach your coaches to hit Success Club, you'll be successful. And that's literally it. So um, that is the secret, but how do we do that? And how do we get everybody doing that consistently is, is the question. So um, I watched a call recently from Jessica Pesola. She is in the downline of Lindsay Matway. She's not sponsored by Lindsay Matway, but she's sponsored by one of Lindsay Matway's personally sponsored coaches, which is um, ja Lindsay Stay. And um, this girl came into the business and literally blew it up. And I'm talking like crazy fast. She went diamond in 24 days. She went, let me see, I wrote this down. Two star diamond in six months. She went six star diamond in nine months. She went 10 star diamond in one year. And by 23 months into the business, she was already a 15 star diamond. So it's insane. Um, how quickly she grew, but she obviously knows her stuff, right? If she's duplicating herself to get that many personally sponsored diamonds. So a lot of times you're doing everything, but you're having trouble getting your coaches to get to success club, right? So, um, tonight I want to talk about, maybe you are struggling to hit success club. So this call will help you immensely, but maybe you're having trouble getting your coaches to success club. So this can benefit everybody on this team. Um, Success Club is really just about building trust and investing and inviting. It's not about selling anything and it's not about two points. Like you have to take the, the points out of it. Um, it is not just throwing invites to the wind. Um, like I said, at the end of the day, it's just about building trust and investing in people. So um, this Jessica Pessela girl when she says how she was successful in this business, she says, I literally just dove into inviting. Um, she said, I believed in the business. I got results. I was passionate about it. And I wanted to share that with other people. She said, however, I was really scared because I was not a people person. But I was willing to get out of my comfort zone. And her, com her team name is the Fearless Empire. She said, although she was afraid, she was fearless in her actions every single day. So she said, my coach told me I needed to hit success club to be successful. So I knew that if I wanted to be successful and I wanted to help other people, that I needed to set them up for success with the challenge pack. It was the only way they were going to be successful. I needed to get them plugged into my groups. So getting to success club was a given because I needed to plug them into those challenge packs. So I had to be fearless and invite them. So um, she had to get out of her comfort zone to get success. So um, she said she was shaking the first time that she spoke to a customer, even through Messenger on the computer. Um, she was just so nervous. But like I said, she went all in. And um, here's what really got me about her. She said, those of you that wait until the end of the month, that's me right here. You hit success club, you are selling. You're a salesman because you have no choice but to be because you literally put off, you might not put off inviting, but you end up having to turn into a salesman. You have to throw out flash sales. You have to um, 
do like all the selly type things because you make success club non-negotiable and you have no choice but to be a salesman at the end of the month to hit success club. She's like, but if you don't wait until the end of the month and if you do these investments daily, you won't have any trouble hitting success club plus every single month. So she's hit success club 10 every month she's been in the business plus, okay? So I personally am guilty of not inviting every single day of the month and of not doing that vital behavior until it comes down to the wire and then I get stuck being salesy or having to be salesy to get my success club in. And who wants to be like that, right? I hate having to put out those flash sale posts. Um, I always hit it, but I don't want to have to be like that. And she's saying, if you don't want to have to be like that, then do this every single day. Um, and here's the this. So she said, listen, you have seven seconds to make a first impression. Seven seconds. That's like not a lot of time. Um, so she says, you got to use your page as a way um, that's real and captivating to, to get your audience um, to buy into you. So you got to be real. You have to talk about how you want to have tacos tonight and you don't feel like eating clean and you don't feel like working out and you don't want to be this perfectionist. And I tell you this all the time. Um, you just got to be you. And that's what, that is what's going to make people, um, you got to be honest because that's what's going to make people relate to you. They're going to be more open to what you have to say because they can relate. And in turn, they're going to be more open to opening up to you. And when they are more open to opening up to you, then you guys can build a better rapport and you're going to be able to get more out of them in terms of what their real needs are. And when you get more out of them, then you can help them get better results. And when you help them get better results, guess what? They turn into coaches themselves. And then that's how she, she literally gets these killer challengers that get killer results that turn into coaches and then they duplicate and they turn into diamonds. You know, it's crazy because she just buys into the person so much as a challenge. So um, she has this little system called Hope Heart and Hope Heart and Health. So every day she does her three posts on Facebook or on her social media. And she, anything above her three posts, she says, are her reality show of life. And anything above those three posts can be whatever she wants them to be. But the three posts are... Um, these are her seven seconds that everybody has to see who she really is. So the three posts are health. This is her adding value as a coach. This is her talking about, um, a recipe Her talking about something funny in a workout that she did today, sharing, um, like a blooper from her workout, like just anything about her, but it's not just a shakeology selfie right it's real and it's her then her hope is her faith so this is important to her this is just something that she does and i realize this doesn't apply to everyone but she says that this has become her ministry and it's allowed her to kind of minister to people through her business so she actually takes time to pray over her business every single day she actually asks um for blessing and protection for her business. She asks that um, God brings people to her each day that she's able to help. And she asks that she is able to reap what she sows. In other words, she's not asking to be given a million dollar business sitting on her couch doing nothing. She's saying, for all the work I put in, give me back what I deserve. And um, she engages in consistent action every single day. So she doesn't just post and like sit back and do nothing she's doing the work but that hope is her faith and then her heart is her family so that's her third post of the day that's her being a hot mess mom that's her crazy um it's just her sharing her heart basically her asking questions and engaging her audience um her real life like you know for me that's like my crazy sock matching basket post stuff like that that I'm like actually kind of afraid to share because I'm like, people are going to think I'm freaking crazy. But then again, they're like, oh my God, like I think Alicia has it put all together. And then I see that that basket is ridiculous. And I'm like, she's just like me. And that actually brings more people to me than 
you would expect. So you got to put yourself out there like that. And it's scary to do that, but it really does work. Um, so that's what she does. That's like step one of the invite process. If you're not putting yourself out there enough, then you're, you're not getting, you're not building that trust in that relationship. People have to get to know you through that step. But then she uses this, this system. I'm going to share my screen. It's called the 532 inviting system. This comes from Lindsay Matway, guys. If you're not familiar with Lindsay Matway, she is, she was the top coach two years in a row before Melanie Mitro. Okay. Two years in a row before Melanie Mitro. So she is just, she's not a nobody. I want you to know that. Um, she is definitely not a nobody. Hold on. Got to find the right one. This is my daughter's computer. <laughs> Cheer bell. The five, three, two inviting system. Come on, slow. Yeah, here it is. So the five, three, two inviting system is just this. You do this every single day. And this is what she's talking about, not waiting until the end of the month. Five stands for start five new conversations every single day and don't bring up beach body at all like not at all at all um so you just start five conversations with five random people on your friends list and it can be about anything anything something that you see on their page that catches your your eye and and you want to be genuine but just start five conversations you obviously have to track these the two i'm sorry the three stands for invite three people to a challenge group so now you go back to the five Five of the ones from the days before. It can be from last week. It can be from three days ago. It can be from four days ago. But you're going to take three of those people and you're going to invite three of them from a week or more ago. So that's the trick. It can't be from less than a week ago. Um, invite three of those people to be in your challenge group for this month. Okay. So you got to have some sort of tracking system to track this. And then the two stands for check in with two of your personally sponsored coaches. But if you don't have personally sponsored coaches yet, then invite two new people to a business opportunity call or invite two challengers to join your team or, you know, things like that. You can, you know, basically about the coaching opportunity is the two. So you should also be adding three to five friends a day. And a little side note, how do you add three to five friends a day? So Facebook is really helpful with this. It like breaks down your friends list into high school friends, um, college friends. If you go into your friends list, you'll see it's broken down. So you go into your friends list and then you look in like high school friends. Go in there and look into friends of friends lists. And then when you're in there, you start looking at their friends list and you start looking for people in your market. So for me, if I'm in my some girl I went to high school with, if I go into her friends list, I go in there and I start looking um, for like people that might fit my market. Maybe it's going to be somebody that has a profile picture with like multiple kids in their profile. That's going to stand out to me. So think about your target market and then why you would add that person. Once you find someone that you find in your target market, then you're going to click on their profile, scroll through like and comment on a few pictures that appeal to you, add them as a friend, send them a message, start a conversation, you know, be very genuine about that. But that's how you add three to five friends a day. They're not all going to accept your friend requests. Some of them are going to think you're a weirdo. You definitely don't want to bring a beach body. Um, you just want to be a friend. There's nothing worse than you adding someone and literally sending them a message three seconds later saying, Hey, did you know I was a Beachbody coach? Like, you should join my challenge group. No, that's horrible. Do not do that. That's what gets Beachbody coaches a bad rap. Because they're like, you literally just added me so you could sell me something. And that is bad, 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 bad. No. Go to the number five. Start a conversation that has nothing to do with Beachbody. Like, so if it's, a, if it's like somebody that has a toddler and you see that they have a toddler, you can say something like, I don't know. You have to make it genuine to you. But for example, I could be like, hey, so-and-so, um, I see, well, here's, this is the next slide I want to show you. This is, um, let me find it. 
how to start a conversation, minimize it. This is the inviting formula. So you comment, compliment, question, and that's how you have a conversation. So for example, you never go into a sales pitch unless you want to be a salesperson, which again, we don't want to do. You want to connect with them about their family life. So you can say something like, I love your family. It looks like you guys are doing great. Where are you working these days? Um, again, you have a comment, a compliment, a question, and you end with a question so they're more likely to respond. Um, if you approach people like from old acquaintances, like maybe that you haven't had a connection with um, or someone that you haven't talked to in a long time, it's a good way to start this if you haven't done it. So go back to like the high school list and people you haven't connected with in a long time. And then um, if you're approaching people that you don't know, but you have a mutual friend with, um, again, you want to start with a connection that you have with them. So I know that we don't know each other, but I'm looking at your, from by looking at your pictures, I noticed you just got married. Your wedding pictures are amazing. Who did them? You got to find some kind of connection. And, or you could say something like, hey girl, you look great. I can see from your page that you like to work out. Like what kind of workouts are you doing? Um, or I see that we have kids around the same age. Your kids are so adorable. Comment, compliment, question. What are some of the things that you do at home with them? Like I just became a stay at home mom. Like I'm just trying to look for activities for, you know, things to do at home. So I could use some mom advice. Do you see? how you can take that comment, compliment, question formula to just start a conversation. That's for the number five thing where I tell you to have five combos a day. So use this formula for how to get those conversations started every single day. If you do five of those a day, you're great because then you can go back in a week and invite three of them to a challenge group. So I'm gonna talk about that now. How do you turn that, you've started a conversation, how do you turn that into a challenge group invite now? Okay, so I know that's what you're wondering. So um, let me find my notes here. So after you've done this, you've, you've um, comment, compliment, question them, you went back and forth, you've just started a general generic conversation with them and it's going great. You know, you haven't even brought up Beachbody, but now it's been at least a week and you'd like to invite them to your upcoming challenge group. Well, the key is, you want to invite them using voice memo, okay? Two reasons. One is that you can really come across with like excitement and being genuine and you have to keep it short because it has to be a minute or less. You can't ramble. And um, you, it's not gonna be like too wordy. Like I said, it's just, it's just way more genuine. They can hear your voice versus just like typed out and they aren't going to stop reading like two sentences in, they're actually gonna listen to the whole thing to see what you say. So you wanna use voice memo for the challenge group invite. So let me tell you like what this could sound like. So say you were talking to that girl about, I was talking to that girl about like potty training or something. I was reconnecting with the girl from high school that I haven't talked to in 10 years. I asked her about her daughter. We were reconnecting. Now it's time for me to invite her. I could say something like this, like when I get her on the phone or when I get her on voice memo, it would be like something like, hey girl, um, I've been thinking of you and you've been on my mind. Um, I just wanted to tell you that I don't know if you know this or if you saw, but some other mom, wait, some other mamas and I, some other mamas that I've been reconnecting with are going to be doing this launch group for this I got to turn this. For this three week fitness program, it's like this ramp up style 25, 45 minute a day. Everything you need to eat is planned out for you. It's going to be so much fun and stress free for us busy moms that are just trying to get back to school. Um, I know we're just reconnecting, but would you consider joining us? So it's real, real simple, kind of enough to pique her interest. Let her know that it's not just her I'm inviting, there's other people I'm inviting too. 
And all I'm trying to do, I didn't mention Shakeology. I didn't tell her anything about a price. I didn't say anything. I'm just trying to get her to say, yeah, I'm interested. Like, tell me more, right? That's all I'm trying to get her to do. So you want to keep it simple. You want to keep it flowy. Um, you want her to say, that sounds interesting. Tell me more. And then through that, you would continue the invite. Now, you're not going to go right from, okay, now you need to buy a challenge pack if you're interested. No, again, you have to dig in deep and you have to find out more about her first. Why would she be interested? What exactly would pique her interest about it? What are her goals? And I'm going to show you a sample conversation. Um, keep in mind that if you're not constantly doing this, if you're not constantly inviting, nobody can join you guys. Um, it's not that you have to invite, it's that you get to invite, like you get to share this opportunity with people. And if you start looking at it like that, your business is going to change. Um, it's like why you're here. It's why you joined because you loved it so much. So why wouldn't you share this with everyone else? Um, Yes, people are going to say no, but keep in mind, they're going to say no because it takes on average, people have to be exposed to this idea on average seven times. So you might be inviting them for the first time or the seventh time. Your posts on Facebook count as an exposure. That exposure might be the first time they're seeing it or the actual invite might be the seventh time. They might say no, but really their no is just a planted seed and it might just mean well it does just mean not right now but later so you're just planting seeds so don't take offense to it just know that you're planting that seed and when it's ready you will reap what you sow so um so again people need to hear it about seven times before they commit and i've been in this business long enough to know i will tell you there have people that have said Oh yeah, I'll do this. And then they fall off the face of the earth. And then they tell me again, okay, I'm ready. Then they fall off the face of the earth. And then literally, I don't know why, but like eventually they come around and they're ready to do it. And they finally order their challenge pack. It does happen, I promise. So your invite might be the first or the seventh time that they've heard it. So um, your posting on daily posts are part of the inviting process. So if they do tell you no, this is what I want you to do. I want you to say, well, I want you to answer their objections, obviously. Don't just take a no as a no. Talk them through the objections, and I'll share one more slide with you on that. But um, I want you to say something like this. Hey, you know what? No problem. I'm actually doing another group next month. Would it be okay for me to follow up with you then and see if that's a better time? So get permission to reach back out to them because the follow-up, the fortune's in the follow-up. So maybe this just is a bad month. And you know, most of the time they're gonna say, you know what, that would be great. Many, many times, like 99% of the time, they're not gonna say no, you know? And they'll give you permission to reach back out and you put them on the next month list. So um, if they say, no, it's not good for me, you can simply say, no problem. Um, you can actually even turn that into a positive. You can say, you know what? I completely understand. I would love to pray for you. Um, let me think how I would word this. Tell me what it is that you need right now. You know, basically you want to keep the relationship there. You don't want them to think like, because they say no to you that you're just like over them. So when they say no, you want to say, you want to just like redirect the conversation into something else. So no problem. You know, if anything changes, let me know. By the way, how is Sally doing with her homework? I don't know. But you see what I'm saying? Like, don't just end the conversation. Continue to invest in that relationship because when the time is right, they will be back. Um, so when you're talking about objections, I know a lot of you guys know how to handle those. So I'll just share that slide. But the last thing I want to say is that the conversation should go a little something like this. Let me show you. Here it comes. You really need to dig in. I don't want you to get into 
you got to buy Shakeology from me and you got to buy a challenge pack from me. And you really shouldn't even bring up a challenge pack and what's involved until like the very end of the conversation. So here's, an, here's a sample conversation from Jessica that she had with someone. So obviously Jessica's in blue. She says um, she runs a free group every quarter. She doesn't do one every month. She only does one every quarter. And instead of running it for seven days, she runs it for two weeks or three weeks. And she finds that if she runs them longer, that she's really able to build a connection with those people longer than a seven day free group. So that's why she only does them quarterly. So she reaches out to this girl, Don, and she's like, hey, I don't know if you noticed, but I have this free 21 day crock pot challenge. Um, but I, we just started and wanted to make sure, you know, if you were interested. So then Dawn, because they built a relationship, Dawn just like opens up to her and she says all this stuff. She says, you know, um, this whole story. And, she, and because she's so open to Jessica, Jessica is open with her right back. She, she really, 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 really tells her like some devastating stuff happens in her family and she's really struggling. So Jessica, like I said, because she's open with her, Jessica comes right back and shares some pretty hard things that have been going on in her life. She says, you know, listen, I'm really sorry to hear that. I want you to know that I have been there too. So she's relating to her. She says, I too have been struggling. She talks about how she struggled with binge eating disorder recently and how she had been gaining weight. And she had to really plug into the accountability of the challenge group to get um, results. And basically, like, Shakeology really helped her and the workouts helped her. And um, she really wants to help her also because she knows that this was the path that helped her, that she knows it will help her as well. And so Dawn comes back and she's like, yeah, you know, food has always been my struggle. Um, but she said she pretty much says she doesn't have belief in herself. And Jessica follows up with let me find the last slide. She she comes up with the money excuse and Jessica sends her a voice memo back and she says, listen, um let me find it. She uses the feel, felt, found method. Listen, I used to have that same exact worry. Here's what I, here's how I felt. Here's what I found. Once I started buying Shakeology, I realized I was actually saving money because I wasn't spending money going to Dunkin' Donuts every day or Starbucks, blah, blah, blah. Um, so she says that back in a voice memo and she was, and how accountability really helped her. And the girl says, you know what? You're right. Accountability helps. How does it work? Now, she finally says, well, here's what you need. You need a challenge pack. Here's what it is. You get all this stuff. It's $140, blah, blah, blah. You want me to send you the link to sign up? And the girl says yes. And, you know, but do you see how much conversation was happening before she ever talked about a challenge pack or Shakeology? You know, so I just wanted you to see that. It, it's like a really extensive conversation. And that's how these all should go. So if you're, if you're waiting to the end of the month and you're struggling, you're worried about those two points, you're going to be rushing these conversations. And you're not going to go into these conversations the way you really need to. And you're not going to find out what you need to find out about these people. And then you're not going to be building these relationships the way that we really should be. And I'm guilty of this. So we all need to do a good job at just all month long doing that 532 approach. Um, and really just loving on people, really developing the relationship and success club. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it will come so much easier if you use this method. I hope that makes sense. Do you guys have any questions? She did mention that there was two books that she really loves. She said, um, she loves the circle maker and um, GoPro, which I'm sure you have all heard of. GoPro is by Eric Worre. And I don't know who the circle maker is by. I didn't look it up yet. But as far as um, listening to people like on YouTube, 
he loves to follow Eric Thomas and Inky Johnson. Inky Johnson. I love Eric Thomas ET. He's my favorite. Um, she said after she listens to him, she's like, I feel like I could enter the Olympics and win. <laughs> she's like, he pumps me up. So if you ever need like a pick me up, I feel that way about Gary Vaynerchuk too. Like he just like speaks to my heart. I don't know. I just love him. But um, find people that do that to you. It might not be these people for you, but you have to find the people for you that fire you up. And then also just like follow coaches that you that are good and that inspire you. But again, you don't want to try to become them. You want to copy them, but just that are good. So top coaches like Lindsay Matway, Bonnie Engel, um, Melanie Mitro. Um, let me think. Jessica Pesola, this girl I'm talking about right now, P-E-S-O-L-A is her last name. She's amazing. Um, Ruth Schroner. These are all top coaches that you should follow because they're doing it right. So I hope that helps, guys. That was kind of my my spiel tonight. We're running out of time, but um, I wanted to see if anyone had any questions. Nope. I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I have one. Okay, go. Okay, so whenever you're tracking your conversations, what do you use to keep track of them? And like your friend invites and all of that. Because right now I have a Google Sheet and I have a a notebook and another notebook and another notebook. So a couple people are using Teamsy. I just subscribed to it. I think I'm going to love it, but it's an expense. So if you um, aren't looking to spend that, there is a couple things you can do. You can do um, the spreadsheet. You can like an Excel sheet. You can do um, like pen and paper. You can do, uh, what's the other one? Hold on just left my head. Oh, Google Streak is free. So check out that one if you aren't looking to spend money on Team Z. Google Streak. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. But I think if we if we start implementing the 532 method every single day, I think it, it's just going to blow our minds. So, sound good? Okay. So, um, I'll put the recording up, and if you guys want to share it with anyone that missed it, and uh, that's all. Have a good night. Bye, guys.